morning. morning. What a beautiful, sunshiny Sunday morning where we can worship together again here in person, there online or somewhere, but it's good to be here and good to be together. As we think about what's going on in the life of the church, even though it is a little bit different, it is still alive and well. So please make sure you take a look at the announcements that are uh, in the worship order and again online. uh, I want you to think about the calendar. You can see that we've got things coming up in April and in May and July. They're, They're there. We've got things for Uh, Sunday school materials for families, we've got birthdays, anniversaries, we've got treasure sales for KDC. I mean, again, there are a lot of things going on, and please take a look, get involved. The one that I want to make sure you put uh, on your calendar as well is May 22nd, and uh, the reason I say that is it's something that's probably pretty unique or not heard of, and that is uh, Women's at Risk Pop-Up Boutique at North Park. Uh, there's going to be more info coming, but uh, some of you have been to the War Chest, and that is a place in Grand Rapids that uh, has uh, uh, items that are made in different places, and all the sales and profits go towards helping folks who are uh, being human trafficked, uh, women, battered women uh, at risk, and this is exactly what that is. It's, uh, it's basically a boutique pop-up for that. So if you haven't been part of those trips to Grand Rapids, you can now be part of May 22nd right here and be part of that as we support those folks. Also, you'll see that there's a bunch of green bags at the front of church, and there's a, uh, an announcement right there, first announcement, all about hope bags. Uh, you know that for quite a few weeks I did a hope bag for the kids during the children's message uh, as we began the, the last year of, uh, of worshiping differently. Uh, now we've actually got hope bags that are going to be bigger than just kids and bigger than just our church. And uh, you can read that announcement. I want you to read it clearly and we'll hear more about it a little bit later in the worship service. But I wanted to again make a note of that as well. Um, hey, it is springtime, although uh, it's a little chilly again, and, and my wife just made my morning this morning when she said, it's supposed to snow next week. And I said, really? And she said, yeah. And I said, like a dusting? And she said, no, I heard inches. And I'm like, oh. So I'm hoping that uh, um, the weather forecasters are, again, incorrect, shall we say. But uh, um, that's okay, too. And uh, I know that she has said this to some of you as you walked in, but uh, um, over the last few weeks and for the next couple of weeks still, um, I'm super excited to be here. Super excited, because like this is my only outing, all right? Uh, I, I can't drive still. I can't put weight on my leg still. Um, and that's uh, for, a, again, a couple more weeks or I'm partway through that. But I, I say to people, I, I, you know, I always, I always wondered what dogs thought or felt about sticking their head out the window in a car when they're driving. And now I know, Okay. Because, you know, Jen will come home and I'm like, can we go for a ride? Can we go for a ride? Can we go for a ride? I'm just like the dog, you know? And I want to stick my head out the window and drive down the road. So again, I just, uh, I'm, I'm thankful that I can be here with you and uh, thankful that we can be here together. So, yeah. So, hey, um, we're going to worship together. And uh, again, that's exciting. And uh, you guys can all stand for me. And uh, um, But we are going to, We're going to stand, we're going to wave at the camera, welcome everybody out there, and wave and welcome each other here, and then we're going to begin with our uh, opening song. the earth you reign 
soaring on high Every mountain stream, every sunset sky But my one request, Lord, my only aim That you reign in me again Lord, reign in me, reign in your power Over all my dreams, in my darkest hour You are the Lord of all I am Won't you reign in me again Over every thought, over every word May my life reflect the beauty of my Lord Cause you mean more to me than any earthly thing Won't you reign in me again Lord reign in me Reign in your power over all my dreams In my darkest hour You are the Lord of all I am Won't you reign in me again Lord reign in me Reign in your power over all my dreams In my darkest hour You are the Lord of all I am Won't you reign in me again What does God say about worship? About what worship is really about? What fasting, as they said in the Old Testament, is really about? And I want you to hear these words from Isaiah 58 where it says, Is this not the kind of fasting that I've chosen to loose the chains of injustice and to unite, untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh? Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. As we walk this earth, when we worship, how do we worship? Is it just here on a Sunday and we feel good about it? Or is it every day thinking about how we can feed the hungry, clothe the naked, shelter the homeless, help the poor, and then our light will shine? Today is a day where we think about shining light in a unique way and in a very godly way. And I just pray that we might worship God every day in every way through true fasting. Let's pray together. Lord God, you have brought us here this morning on a beautiful morning to worship. But worship is not just about this place, this time, this hour. But it's about every moment having the eyes that Christ had for the world. Being able to see those who are hurting those who are hopeless, those who need to be loved and filled with grace and joy. Lord, that we might, from this place, be inspired to true fasting, true worship, at every corner, at every turn, at every moment of our life. Lord, let your Spirit fill this place and let it fill each of us so that we might truly fast every day. In your name, amen. Love, love, Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and love all of mankind as you would love yourself and love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and mind love all mankind we've got Christian lives to live we've got Jesus love to give we've got Nothing to hide because in Him we abide. Love, love, Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. And love all of mankind as you would love yourself. And love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and mind. And love all mankind. We've got. Christian lives to live, we've got Jesus' love to give, we've got nothing to hide because in Him we abide, love. You guys did that really good.
come now fount of every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of gladness Teach me some melodious sonnet Sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it A mount of thy redeeming love Come now found, come now king Come now, precious Prince of Peace. Hear your bride to you we sing. Come thou found of our blessing. I was lost in utter darkness till you came and rescued me. I was bound by all my sins when your love came and set me free. And now my soul can sing a new song. And now my heart has found a home. Now your grace is always with me. And I'll never be alone. Come now, found. Come now, King. Come now, precious Prince of Peace. Hear your bride to you we sing. Come thou, found. Thou bless Oh, to grace, how great a debtor Daily I'm constrained to be Let thy goodness, like a fetter Bind my wandering heart to thee Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord. Take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Come now, found. Come now, King. Come now, precious Prince of Peace. Your bride to you we sing. Come thou found of our blessing. Amen. Please have a seat. Kids, you know that uh, I try to connect with you and it is hard. I am so used to and so missing meeting you all up front. But at the same time, I know that you are out there. The other part of it is, is that when it happens like this, not only do I want you little ones to come on front to the TV or stick your head up and really pay attention, but I can also speak to maybe some of us older kids out there as well. And so this morning, kids, I want you to think about something that I just love. There's a few things in my lifetime that I probably have got a little bit, oh, what do I want to say here, somewhat addicted to, let's say. And for a long time, I loved nothing more than a good pair of new gym shoes, all right? I mean, the best Nikes out there, whatever it was, and of course, they had to be cool colors, but I love my gym shoes. That's just the way it is. But another thing that I really love and I still do, honestly, is I love watches, all right? I know it's a little bit weird, and I know they're saying that people don't even use them anymore because we have what? 
We have our phones, right? But I love watches. And so kids, I want you to make sure you find yourself a watch. And you can wear it if you want to, but know where it is. Maybe it's mom and dad's watch. Maybe it's a watch grandpa or grandma or somebody can give you. But I want you to think about having a, a watch. And maybe for you older kids, maybe it is your phone. Where you can just, again, tap it. You get that home screen and I can see what time it is and I know. But I want you to have something right there in your hands where you know what time it is. Why? Because then, the next time that you see mom or dad, I want you to walk up to them with that watch in your hand or with that phone in your hand with the clock displayed and say this, I love you. And you say, Pastor Paul, what are you talking about? I want you to take that watch, take that phone, whatever it is, and show it to them and say, I love you. And the reason is, is because kids, a lot of people spell love, L-O-V-E, but it's a proven fact that kids, and a lot of us adults, spell love, T-I-M-E. You want your moms and your dads to spend time with you. And that doesn't stop. Maybe you're 12, you still want to go for a walk or go out for ice cream. Maybe you're 16 or 18, you still want to go shopping or you want to go for a ride in the car. I want you to walk up to mom and dad and say, hey mom and dad, I love you. Just so they can remember, the way that they can say I love you back is to spend time with you. So, Again, whether you're a little one or a younger or a little older one or a really older one or probably a lot of wives could do this, wives could do this to their husbands, hey, I love you. And let's show them that love by T-I-M-E in their lives. So kids, get a watch, get your phones out and show mom and dad you want to spend time with them and say I love you. Hey, as we think about the prayers of God's people, you can take a look at that prayer corner that's in the worship order. Uh, they're available um, online, I know. Um, but I want you to take a look at those names that are, again, printed there and lift those folks up in prayer. Um, I also want you to know that, uh, uh, again, um, we've had several folks within the congregation, especially over the last couple weeks, who have been struggling with the COVID virus uh, and it uh, just seems to be uh, more and more prevalent uh, than even last spring and yet we're in that mode of uh, vaccines and other things that hopefully we can get on top of that and so we just on the one hand want to pray for folks on the other hand want to again pray for moving forward and doing things and getting back to a more normal lifestyle so again remember them as well and I think of the kids as well, going back to school and back to work for moms and dads. That all kind of gets crazy after spring break. And I just want to encourage you all to hang in there and uh, stay the course as families and work at it really hard. So, and then again, I want to say thank you for your continued support of the ministry. I know it's different. I know it's strange. Uh, you know, whether it be being able to get together, whether it be worship, whether it be things like funerals and weddings and all sorts of stuff everything is different but it doesn't mean that we don't care and it doesn't mean that we can't reach out to one another and love one another and so i hope and i pray whether it be here whether it be through the internet whether it be whatever that we're staying connected the best we can and i love to see you all and hear from you all and i know that it'd be great to be able to again gather however we can and just see one another's face so thanks again for continued support and ministry let's uh let's pray together this morning lord god we come to you this morning and i think that you hold a watch before us and say i love you i think often you want just a little bit of our time and we forget we talk about how busy we are in this world. 
We talk about how many things we have to do. We make all sorts of excuses, and yet you are there saying, just give me a little bit of time. Show me that love. And I pray, Lord, that we might be people who not only see that in our loved ones, children and spouses and family members, but we see that in you. That you want us to look to you on a regular basis and say, hey, let's take a walk. Let's talk. And Lord, right now, that's really what we're doing. And I'm so thankful, Lord, that you have continued to hold this place called North Park together. In whatever pieces it might be, however it might look, the ups, the downs, the lefts, the rights, you continue to let people support this ministry and you continue to let people come up with creative ways to do ministry in our world. And that is your power and that's your might. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful for folks who have again stood together. Folks who have been willing to work together and continue to, through this all, be together as God's people and make a difference. I'm thankful, Lord, that though we might be separated in many ways, I continually see cases where people reach out and connect and love and support. And that's really what it's all about. And so, Lord, that we might give you time. And right now, again, take that walk with you. And as we walk, that we might offer up the people of this prayer corner. Lord, you know them by name. Lord, you know the things that they stand in need of. And Lord, there are many others. Others who are struggling with this virus. And others who are struggling with, again, doctor's appointments and therapy and whatnot. There's others, Lord, who are dealing with depression and isolation. Others, Lord, who again are struggling to understand what that future looks like. And yet, you are God. You are faithful. And you continue to walk with us. And so I lift up these folks, Lord, and I pray for the people who we don't even know about at this moment and just ask you to bless their spirit, to bless their healing, whether it be physical, emotional, or spiritual, and that, Lord, the light might shine, that your Son might grant them hope and grace and joy and love, and that they might see a brighter tomorrow. Lord, again, you just hold the watch up and say, my child, Give me a little bit of your time. And I pray that we might be people, again, who truly fast by not only feeding the hungry and clothing the naked and housing the homeless, but by giving you time in our busy world. Giving you time because you've given us so much. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for the offering. Thank you for the gifts that keep this place going. And Lord, that we might always be passionate about new ways to share the good news. We pray it in your name. Amen. <clears throat> Ooh, that was a good catch. <sighs> You are all way too quiet, okay? You know, <clears throat> I feel like I should have you all shout out loud or something, but we'll figure it out as we go. What time is it? Yeah, that is, well, yeah, yeah, what time is it? I could get some different answers, Jen. That's the problem. I, it's time for Paul to be done, or, you know, I don't know, you know. Um, I wanted to start this morning kind of by looking backwards a little bit. And what do I mean? Again, I've had a lot of time to sit and reflect, to stand and reflect, to lay down and reflect, to stare at the walls and reflect. I've done a lot of it over the last few weeks. And one of the things that was brought up that really surprised me was that for whatever reason, there were a few people from Easter with a misunderstanding about what my words meant. It was at the end of that message where I 
kind of emphatically said that I am done. And I really thought that it was clear that it was the whole idea that we are at a crossroads and we can live as the world wants us to live. We can believe what the world wants us to believe. We can be sucked into that darkness or we can choose to follow Christ and the cross and the resurrection and the hope that is held within those. But some saw the term, I am done, as kind of a, a negative, uh, a sense of I'm giving up or I'm quitting. And I'm sorry if any of you got that feeling or in some way that was communicated. I don't know how that happened, but I want to be clear that done for me is about living the way the world wants me to live. Done for me is buying what the world is selling. Done for me is, again, following what the world wants me to follow. My focus needs to be, our focus needs to be, in that hope, in that grace, in that resurrection of a living God. And so I want to reaffirm the fact that I truly believe that we are at a crossroads a crossroads as a church, Little C, North Park. A crossroads as a greater church around the world. A crossroads as individuals, as people, who have to choose whether or not we will follow and continue to follow that which I believe is darkness or that which is hope and good news. That we would believe the words that this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it that is where I want to live and that's where that crossroads has brought me and so this morning if we are truly done with what the world wants us to see hear, believe the road that the world wants us to follow if we're truly at that crossroads where and how do we begin to live out the resurrection today? What does it mean to move, to live, to breathe the resurrection of Jesus in our world at every turn? This morning our scripture comes from Romans chapter 13. Verses 8 through 10. And it says this. Let no debt remain outstanding. Except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command love your neighbor as yourself love does no harm to a neighbor therefore love is the fulfillment of the law this morning if we make the decision to be done to again come to that crossroads and say, I'm going to live for Christ. I am going to be resurrected from our worldly events and live for Jesus. What does it look like? Well, first of all, L. L. You can choose love or you can choose the law. Love or the law. For many of us, we've been raised with that whole law thing, the whole Ten Commandments. Sadly, we use the Ten Commandments as either kind of a, a rule book for those who are seeking God. Well, you know, if you can follow these ten things, if you're close to these ten, well, then you're kind of in. You, you get the whole thing. Or we use it as a scorecard for those of us who do believe. Well... If I can be an 8 out of 10, well, then I'm a whole lot closer than if I'm a 6 out of 10. And we use those laws in a way in which we sometimes grade 
or value our spiritual journey. It was a few years ago that for me, the idea of what is the greatest commandment, many people would say, love the Lord your God. That's the number one thing. And I said, no, I believe that thou shalt not covet is number one. And the reason I believe that is because I think that if you don't covet your own independence, you love God. If you don't covet your neighbor's stuff, you won't steal it. Again, wanting something usually gets us in trouble. But this week, this was a new revelation for me. Truthfully, a new revelation when I thought for the first time that love is the fulfillment of the law. And I want you to think about that. That if we truly can live as people of God and love, L, love, give up the law, all right, and love, we fulfill the law. Again, think about it. If we love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, strength, and understanding, we won't worship any other gods. We won't take the Lord's name in vain because we love God completely. If we love our neighbors, well then we won't bear false witness. We won't covet their possessions. We won't, again, murder them. You see, love is the fulfillment of the law. If we can love, then I truly believe we can be a 10. And I've never thought about it that way. I've always worried, am I lying? Am I cheating? Am I stealing? Am I, and I go through the 10. But I need to focus on the one. And the one is, can I love the way that God asks us here to love? I'd heard the story about a monk who had the opportunity to lead worship at the monastery. And I know that's a hard image for many of us, but imagine if you would a dark stone sanctuary with very dim lighting. And as he approached the pulpit, the worship area to lead and to preach that sermon, it was filled with darkness. He walked forward and as he walked forward, there was an image of Christ on the cross. And he took the candle in his hand and he highlighted the cross. And then he took the candle and he highlighted the hands and the feet of Christ. And he took the candles and he highlighted that thorny crown around his head. And he took the candle and he showed the side where he had been pierced. And then he blew the candle out and he walked out of the sanctuary. You see, that's all there is. No greater example of love than that and we are called to love love in order to fulfill that law in order to let go of those 10 and all the grading we need to love we also need to oh have outstanding debt in our life now i don't know about you guys but i have been taught since i was a kid don't go into debt and if you're a believer of uh, the great Christian leader of finances, Dave Ramsey, Ramsey would say, don't go into debt. Get rid of it. Be debt free is the goal. I even remember as a teenager wanting to buy this or buy that. And every now and then I would go and ask my parents, can I have a little bit of money? And they would say, well, we'll loan you the money. And then, of course, before I got it paid back to them, I'd say, well, can I have a little more? And they would say, what? Until you pay off what you owe us, then you can have some more. Don't have outstanding debt. And yet I'm here today as your debt counselor to say, 
we all have an outstanding debt. And it's an amazing, outstanding debt. And that is that we must indeed pay back the love of Christ into the lives of others. Pay that debt that Christ paid for us on the cross. Every day, every moment that we look at the cross, that we face that crossroad, we can hate as the world wants us to hate, we can distrust as the world wants us to trust, or we can understand that Jesus loves us enough to die so that we might in turn love others. That outstanding debt is there. And we will never be able to repay it. Because we are human beings. We will never ever be able to repay it. It will always be outstanding. The question is whether we will continually want to make the payment. And love others. And fulfill the law. L, you want the law or you want love? O, there's that outstanding debt. V, I want you to understand in a very strange way that this is virtual. There is a 21st century word for you, virtual. That this whole idea of loving and living out this love, of repaying that debt, is virtual. What do I mean? By definition, virtual. Not physically existing as such but made by software or appears to be made. It's virtual. What do I mean? Folks, human love is imperfect. Human love is imperfect. We cannot love people the way that God wants us to love them unless Christ dwells within us. So we become the virtual presence of God in the world today. Though people may not see Jesus, they may not see God, it appears, that love appears, how? Through our existence. God loves through us, and our love is made perfect with the power of God dwelling in us. If we think we are the ones who can love, we are sadly mistaken. In order for us to pay that debt back every day, we need Christ within our lives. In order for us to again survive and do that crossroads and move into the future of hope with the resurrection, then we need the Holy Spirit empowering us so that we might love in a complete way. You see, we are the virtual presence of God in our world. If it's not for us, then there isn't real love in the world today. There are agendas, there are opinions, there are politics, but the only real love is the love of the cross. And we are called to be people who let that crossroad live in us so that we bring love to others we are the virtual reality of God for the people who we come in contact with I read a story of a new preacher a new pastor who showed up as a church and it showed up with quite the fanfare the church had been waiting and looking for the new pastor. They were excited. He was one of these young guys, not an old guy like me. And hey, they were wondering how it would go that first Sunday. And so that first Sunday, he gets up there to preach his sermon. Everybody's ready to take notes and see how it goes. And up on the screen flashes John 13, 34, where it says, A new command I give to you that you love one another just like I love you. He preached his sermon. People were excited. They had coffee. They told him what a great job he did. And they couldn't wait for that next week. And what better program he would have. Much to their surprise, what flashed up on the screen? 
John chapter 13, 34. A new command I give to you that you love one another just like I love you. Many of the leadership wondered, scratched their heads, but they thought, oh, there's got to be a new message here, something different. They let it go. It wasn't bad. Coffee, okay, here we go. Week three, guess what comes up on the screen again? John 13, 34. A new command I give you that you love one another just like I love you. Week four, what comes up on the screen? Week five, what comes up on the screen? Week six, what comes up on the screen? Finally, the leadership says we need to have a meeting here. They have their meeting and they look at their pastor and they say, what's going on? I don't get it. We're tired of this message. And he said, well, I look at it this way. Once you figure this out, then I'll move on to my next message. We've got to be people who are the virtual reality of God's love in the world today. Love or law, outstanding debt, virtual reality, and E, L, O, V, E, everyone. 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 Well, you know, many of us, we say neighbor. Well, that's easy. We know our neighbors. I mean, Ben and Gina, you live across the street from, you know, those old people, the Staperts, right? Easy to love them. You know, you love your neighbor, all right? We know our neighbors. We kind of pick our neighbors. Yeah, <laughs> you pick our neighbors. But God's love is a lot bigger than this. And what do I mean? Well, you know, I, when I read this passage, I thought, oh my word. And I really did say in my mind, oh my word. Because I read this passage, but then I always read surrounding stuff. And when I say everybody, okay, so maybe, okay, I can love my, like, brother's friends or, or you know, um, so-and-so's relatives. I mean, we, we love these people that we can manage. But when I read around this passage, I was like, wow. Because the first part of chapter 13 says this. Love everyone, excuse me, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against God. God has instituted and will bring judgment on all people. For the rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong, do you want to be free from fear from one authority? Then do what is right, and you will be commended for it. It goes on and talks about loving tax collectors. I don't know about you. I don't love the IRS, okay? But it's clear that God says if you want to fulfill the law, then love. And love means everyone. Everyone. It doesn't matter what bumper sticker they have. It doesn't matter what flag they fly. It doesn't matter what posters in their yard. It doesn't matter about me being right. God's word clearly says, love them. Love them. Because, remember, the debt that you owe is for Jesus who died for you while you were yet a sinner. And so it's clear we're called to love everyone. Really? you got to be kidding me. But you see, that's where we need the power of God within us. That's where we need to stand at that crossroads and say, I'm going to choose and let the Holy Spirit live. That's where we stand there and say, I'm going to love and not get caught up in the law. I'm going to remember the debt that I owe. I'm going to be Jesus alive in myself and I'm going to show everybody. Because it's then that the light of God shows in our world. Really? All authority? 
tax collectors? People with different opinions than what? And love them? Yeah, that's what it says. I'd read this story. James Moore wrote this story. Tells us about a name man, George. George was a peacemaker with a big heart and a wonderful sense of humor. Everyone loved George at the church. He was respected at the hospital where he worked. And the reason why so many people loved George was because he was always kind and respectful to everyone he met. George's children clearly remember the days that George spent in the hospital before his death. The, the administrator of the hospital paid him a visit. They spoke as though they were old friends. A few minutes later, one of the janitors came to visit George. They too had a very nice visit. When the janitor left, one of George's children said to him, Dad, did you realize that you treated the president of the hospital and the janitor just the same? George smiled. He chuckled. And then he said, let me ask you something. If the administrator left for two or three weeks and the janitor left for a couple of weeks, which one do you think would be missed the most? Then George called his children around his bed. And he said, let me show you something. I carry in my pocket all the time, he told them, even when I mow the lawn, George pulled out of his pocket a pocket-sized cross and a marble with a golden rule on it. George said, on the cross are written these words, God loves you. And on the marble are these words, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The cross reminds me of how deeply God loves me. And the marble reminds me of how deeply God wants me to love others. Love. Folks, we are called by God to love. Above all else, to fulfill the law, to change this world, to bring hope, joy, and possibility, we are called to love. It's not easy. It's not simple. But it is the command that God gives us to love, love, love. Amen. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you would help us to understand what love is. Whether it be a watch, whether it be a person on the side of the road with a sign saying, can you help me? Whether it be a wife or a husband, a son or a daughter, a neighbor, a co-worker, we're all looking for love. And I just pray, Lord, that we as people who call ourselves Christian might love, love all people. We pray in your name. Amen. This morning, I want to take a moment, we want to take a moment, and again, explain to you these hope bags. Again, and what's written on them. My body and my heart may grow weak, but God is the strength of my heart and all I need forever. These are hope bags. And each of us have been driving around, seeing people, especially of late, who are struggling in this world. And so often, again, there is that piece of us that wonders, well, why don't they get a job? Well, they're probably just scamming us. Well, who knows what they're really all about, and we don't really love them completely. Here is a chance for us to love. And if you're one of those people who drives around a lot, sees folks a lot, has an opportunity, whether it be in that shape or in others, somebody at school, somebody at work, and you have a chance to reach out to them and show them some love, we want you to take one of these bags, keep it in your car, whatever it might be, and when the opportunity, when the virtual uh, reality of God's love 
comes forth in you, you can pick this bag up, you can hand it to them and say, you know, God loves me so much and I want to love you. And give them a hope bag. And so they're here for the taking. We want you to take them, share them, give them out. I hope and pray every one of them is gone this morning and we need to make more. And pretty soon we see people, whether they be people in school, whether they be people at work, whether they be homeless people downtown, carrying these bags around, knowing that someone, somewhere, hates them. What's the word we want, folks? Loves them. So these are hope bags. And so if you would, just join with me one second here. Lord God, bless these bags. That you and your glory might go forth. That again, we might pay that debt in a small way through one of these bags. Through looking at someone with respect and care and concern and loving them. And letting them know that they're not alone, but that someone cares and that you, above all, care for them. So, Lord, you do mighty things. You, again, virtually do things we can't even imagine through us and through these bags. And let there be a little bit more hope and joy and love and peace in our world because of your love for us and our love for for others. And all God's people said, Amen. It's time for us to love. For those of you watching out there again, I didn't say it well. Um, these bags, again, will be available as well to you. Just call the office, let us know you're coming, and you can pick one up if you're out there, want one, need one. But again, uh, I hope and I pray that this is going to become something that we can uh, continue to do and continue to be a blessing and continuing to just move it throughout Kalamazoo. So please, please, please participate, get involved, and be willing to love. One other thing, too, is I just got a text, and again, this is kind of a new, new world we live in, but again, uh, many of you know Becky Huntley and the kids uh, and TJ, her husband. Just, uh, you know, I prayed for folks with COVID. Well, I just found out TJ's parents, um, uh, TJ Huntley, again, uh, his parents were taken by ambulance the hospital they both are struggling with COVID and so it's it's not uh, not an easy time for them so again uh, remember them in prayer as well so um, I invite you to stand and receive a blessing as you go from this place <clears throat> you know that the closing parting chorus is a new hallelujah let us sing love to the nations. Why do we sing love to the nations? Because we bring hope of the grace that has freed us. Again, the debt. Make it known and make him famous. Folks, as we go from this place, let's go down the road of good news. Let's go down the road of love. Let's go down the road of of hope and of possibility let's bring that famous one to the forefront of our world and change it with the good news of christ as you go from this place you are filled with the love of god the father you are filled with the love and the grace of jesus christ and you are filled with the holy spirit to be the virtual reality of the love of God and the grace of God and the joy of knowing Jesus in our world today. Go from now until forevermore. Amen. Let us sing love to the hope of the grace that is freed of make it known and make it fame sing it out sing a new hallelujah arise let the church rise 
Let love reach to the other side. Alive, come alive. Let the song arise. Arise, let the church rise. Let love reach to the other side. Alive, come alive. Let the song arise.